All right, let's take a look at a, a simple kinematics equation involving a one-dimensional uh, free fall problem. And basically, free fall is dealing with um, free fall is just dealing with any activity where gravity is in control of the situation. So in this case, I have a stone that's thrown vertically upward, upward with a speed of 12 meters per second from the edge of a cliff that's 70 meters high. So what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to go ahead and draw my table. Um, I have my X and my Y components. I'm not even really going to deal with the X components, but I always just draw the table because I want you to get in the habit of doing that. So the acceleration in the Y, the initial in the Y, the final in the Y, delta Y, displacement, and the time. So let's just get in the habit of drawing those variables. And I'm looking for three of them, right? Well, the advantage of a free fall problem is that when I have an object that is thrown into the air, like such, let's say I'm going to show um, straight up, I'm throwing it with an initial velocity. When I have a situation like that, um, we know right away we have a luxury here. We know that the acceleration due to gravity is always going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. I'm not going to write meters per second squared because we have all our correct units. Okay, The V initial, the initial velocity here uh, of this stone that's thrown up is going to be V initial on the Y, right? And we know that it is what? It's 12 seconds. It's being thrown. It's going in the positive Y direction. So I have plus 12. So again, I'm looking for three variables, right? So here's my second variable. And uh, the cliff, the cliff is 70 meters high. So let's, let's talk about this here for a second um, okay so let me just move this down a little bit just to show that it, di it did it was released from this point and this cliff this cliff is going to be um, 70 meters high so I want to emphasize something here so they talk about the height here right here and this is um, this is your height so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to distinguish between height and displacement here so your height here is going to be 70 meters okay but let's talk about displacement because this delta y over here this is displacement this is displacement so what does that mean what's the difference well displacement does not care what happens in between okay in other words we know that this object this object I can get my colors here we know for a fact that this object is going to move up and then it's going to come down so there's going to be a total distance traveled by this object of more than 70 meters however the displacement only cares about what the displacement only cares about what um, the displacement which I'll do in a different color I'll do it in green here uh, we, we really care about my my initial position And my final position okay I want to talk about that for a second because when I'm talking about my displacement now my displacement I started from here and I finished here right so what does that mean well it means that when we're talking about Delta Y we really don't care what's happening in between here I just care about where did I start where did I finish so if I'm talking about my displacement where did I start and where did I finish I'll draw it over here where did I start where did I finish I started here and I finished here, right? So that's my displacement, right? It's not the distance that it traveled, it's the displacement. So this is my displacement, my delta y. What is my delta y? It went down 70 meters, so it's negative 70 meters, okay? So this is the difference between height and displacement. The displacement's going to be negative 70 meters. So I'm going to write that there. So that's important to understand because the height, we don't really care. It's just saying that's the height. The displacement saying, where did you start? Where did you finish? That's the displacement, okay? So now I have my three variables, right? So what are we asking for? We want to know how much later does it reach the bottom of the cliff? So how much later? What does that mean? What are we looking for? We are looking for time. And then they want to know, what is the speed just before hitting? Then we're going to be looking for V final Y. Well, there's actually a couple ways we can approach this problem. I can dire go directly for time first. I'm just going to move this X out of the way because we didn't even use it. Uh, I can go directly for the time first using a quadratic. 
Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to avoid that right now. I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to solve for my final speed first. So they want to know what is the speed just before hitting. So if I took a look at this trajectory path of this, this is just going to go, this is basically going to go straight up. It's going to reach some max height and then it's going to come all the way back down, right? It's going to keep moving down, pick up speed as it's going down. And there's going to be some kind of a final speed down here, right? Right before it hits. And we know that it's going to be going down. So it's going to be, you know, if we're talking about the component of the velocity, it's going to be negative. So let's, let's go ahead and start looking for that first. I'm going to go for the speed first and then you do the time just because I want to avoid using a quadratic right away in this equation. Uh, I'm going to say V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2A and then I'm going to say delta Y. Okay. So this is my basic equation here. If you remember, this was equation four of the kinematics that I gave you. So I'm going to look for V final squared. And um, you know, V final squared, I'm going to end up taking a square root here. So V final is going to be the square root of V initial squared plus 2A delta Y. So the signs are really important here, okay? We'll, we'll get to that in a minute, but just you know, you got to put in the correct signs or this isn't going to work. And this is why the displacement is so important. So V initial squared, V this is VOY basically, this is VOY, this is V final Y, because we're talking about just the Y direction here. So let me just put that in. So V initial Y is going to be 12 squared, okay? That doesn't matter because it's squared. It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, if you got that wrong, but this is where it's important. 2 times A, A is negative 9.8, and delta y is negative 70. Now, if you put in 70, you're going to get the wrong answer, right? If you didn't put that negative in, it's going to be wrong, OK? So always make sure that when your displacement is down, it's negative. When it's up, it's positive, OK? Acceleration is always negative. So 12 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 70, and you take the square root of the whole thing. OK, so when I solve for that, I'm going to get plus or minus 38.94 meters per second. Let me explain something to you about this equation. This is dealing with the component, the y component of the velocity, not the speed. Okay, It's asking me for the speed here. Though. I'm going to explain that difference in a second. But the final y velocity, it's going down. Can you see that, that it's going down? So you have to put negative in here when we're in this chart. Okay, In this chart, you have to put the correct signs. You cannot put just positive in here if it's if it's going down. So this equation, you have to be very vigilant. You have to be paying attention to the direction that it's going. So you have to look at your diagram. You have to know that if it's going down, that's negative. Okay. And th and the reason I did that is just for the sake of the chart, because um, you know in a minute we're gonna we're gonna calculate the time, and this sign has to be correct. Okay. All right. But in terms of the speed, the speed is just going to be the absolute value of that, okay? So if I wanted to know the speed, I would just say 38.94. It's the absolute value, so the speed is that. In other words, this was the velocity component, which was negative, but the speed is the absolute value. So to answer this part, that's the speed, okay? But the next part, let, let's say I want to go back and find the time, right? Well, let me use a different color for the time here one we haven't used yet, purple, okay? Now I have four variables, right? So I can use some of those simpler equations and I wanna just find how long it took. So I'm gonna go back to one of my simplest equations. I'm gonna go to that second equation I gave you. I'm gonna give you V equals VO plus AT. Okay, and I'm gonna solve for time, right? I'm looking for time. I know this this and this and then this and this one up here right we knew basically everything except for this this is what we were, we were looking for so basically it worked out fine but in this case I'm looking for my time right okay so if I go ahead and solve for time in this case I'm just gonna solve this symbolically I am gonna have time equals V minus V initial over the acceleration. 
So in this case, this is the y, this is the y. I'm going to say negative 38.94 minus 12 over negative 9.8. So when I go ahead and I solve for that, I'm going to get a time of 5.2 seconds, right around there. Now our time, hopefully our time is positive, because if you get a negative time, you did something wrong, because we can't go back in time. Uh, we, you know, then that's an important thing to understand. So you'll know you did something wrong if you got a negative time, but we didn't. It was five seconds. So the final part of this question asks an interesting, an interesting point here. It says, what is the total distance that it traveled? Okay, so to understand that, we need to break this basically into four parts. Okay, okay the first part is, well, let's break it into three parts. Let's just, actually there's just three parts here. The, it's going up here. Okay, that's the first part here. So let me um, use some Roman numerals to emphasize this here. Okay. Um, let me pick a different color here. I'll just pick black. So the first part is it's going up here, right? It reaches its max height. The next part is basically uh, from here. I'm going to break it from here back to its base level here. And then finally, it's going to drop that 70 meters to the bottom. So it's going to go from here to here, from here to here, and then the 70 meters down. So really, we already know this 70 meters here from two to three. So let me let me just, I'm gonna redraw this so it's a little bit more clear down at the bottom here. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just gonna redraw this down here. So delta y here, we knew that this was negative, negative 70 meters. Okay, so, um, we know that this is going to move up. It's going to reach its max height. So I have this distance here. I have this distance here back to its original level and then this distance here. So they want the total distance. In other words, they don't want displacement. They want to know how far did you actually travel during that whole thing, right? So I went here. I went some distance up here. I went some distance back down here. Now notice these two distances are the same, right? And so we're going to use that to our advantage in a minute here. And then it went all the way down here. So let's break this up into segments, okay? So segment, okay, so I have my first segment, segment two, sorry, segment one to two, like this. I have segment, all right, so let's break this off into segments. So I started from zero, let's just call that zero, right? So I have segment zero to one, distance there. I have segment one to two, the distance there. By the way, that's just gonna be the same as this segment, right? They're symmetrical. And then I have segment two to three, like this. We already know that the distance of this one is 70, right? So that's easy. Because distance is absolute value again, it's not displacement, so that's 70. So really what I need to find is the distance from here to here, and then I'm just once I find that, I can just apply it down to here. So to find this distance here, I'm gonna I know my initial velocity, right? Okay. So and I know my acceleration and I know my final velocity. So I'm just gonna write these variables out here just as a sh quick, quick uh, table here. I'm not gonna redo the whole table. Um, I know my initial velocity is 12, right? So I know my initial velocity here is 12. I know my final velocity is zero because that's max height. And I know my acceleration is gonna be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So what, what equation could I use to find this distance? I'm just basically looking for this delta y from here to here, up here, right? Well, I can use this equation, v squared equals v initial squared plus two a delta y. And that's gonna give me what? Well, I know my v final squared is zero, right? And what am I looking for? I'm looking for my delta y. I know my acceleration, I know my initial speed. 
So what I'm doing here is I'm looking for my delta y here. I'm just going to go ahead and solve for that symbolically. So delta y is going to equal negative v o squared over 2a. So my delta y is going to be negative 12 squared over 2 times negative 9.8. Now notice this is a good lesson here in the signs. I'm going up, right? I should have a positive delta y, right? So the two negatives are going to cancel out here. So that delta y there is going to give me 7.35 meters. And I know that that delta y there is going to be a mirror for this one here, right? So I know that the distance, remember, the distance is the absolute value of that, right? So I know my, so my distance for that first one is, is this. My distance for my second one is the same exact thing from, two to, from, from 1 to 2 here. It's the same thing. So it's again at 7.35 meters. So if I wanted to find now the total distance that that object traveled, I would add these up here. Let me move this over just to show you that I'm adding all these up. Adding this, this one up here. I guess I can't move that, so I'll just rewrite it. Seem to be having pin issues right now. Okay, so okay, so I knew that this distance here is simply seventy point zero meters. So if I went ahead and added those up, seven point three five plus 7.35 plus 70 is going to give me a grand total distance, the total distance, okay, the total distance traveled, let's just call that distance, so the total distance is going to give me 84.7 meters. All right, so that's how we would find the total distance. So that one took a little bit. You, you, you had to add it up in segments. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it just took a little more work to do. But there was a lot going on in this problem, actually. Um, again, let's just review. Uh, we had our, our, our ball. We threw it up at 12 meters per second. We knew that the displacement was negative 70. And um, we wanted to find out how late, much later did it fall and what was the speed before it hit. So we started filling out our table, negative 9.8. 12 was the initial velocity, and we knew my delta y was negative 70. Then I went ahead with this equation, and I calculated the final speed when it hit the ground here. Okay, And um, I knew I got a plus or minus answer. So when I go to the table here, my final y velocity, I had to put a negative in there because this table is dealing with the signs. So the signs are important here. Signs important, very important here Okay, in this table. But they ask you for the speed, so you just take the absolute value of that. Okay, Not a problem. Then they want to know, what is the speed just before hitting? So I take this information, this new information that I know. So I say V final equals V initial plus acceleration times time. And I'm looking for the time. So I simply just subtract over the V initial, divide by acceleration, solve for the time. 5.2 seconds later, it hits. Okay. Then the last part said, um, what's the total distance it traveled? So we, we had to note that it, it started here at this initial place, it went to one, back to two, back to three. And I wanted to know, I, I noted here that there was symmetry between zero and one, one and two. Uh, this is the same distance here, it's the same distance here. And then we already know two to three is 70, right? So I went down here and I said, okay, I have to find out my delta y or my displacement to this first point here. And what the easiest equation to do that is just simply v squared equals v initial squared plus two a delta y because I know my initial velocity is 12, my final is zero, and my acceleration is negative 9.8. In that case, I solve for delta y, and I plug it in. And when you plug it in, you should get a positive value because you're going up, 7.35. We know this is the same to this point here, 7.35 back. And we know that the total delta y is 70 if we took the absolute value of that. So your total distance is gonna be 84.7 meters.